to. I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Hey guys, today on What to Watch Before You Die, it's a typical 80s transformation movie that suddenly gets really weird really fast with David Cronenberg's The Fly. Science Magazine journalist Gina Davis happens to meet eccentric scientist Jeff Goldblum just as he's on the precipice of changing the laws of physics as we know them. But it all goes horribly wrong. Here's why to watch. Writer-director David Cronenberg has established a cult following for his sci-fi horror films that are both incredibly disturbing and beautiful in their own right. The Fly is no exception. After Jeff Goldblum, Seth Brundle develops the technology to teleport matter through space, his first human test on himself goes awry as a fly sneaks into the telepod with him, and fusion happens. I mean, that's just science, right? How you doing? May you tell me. Am I different somehow? The story somewhat follows the basic plot outline of the schlocky 1958 version, in which the main character accidentally switches heads with a housefly after attempting to teleport. But Cronenberg and co-writer Charles Edward Pogue's 1986 remake is much more sophisticated. In fact, it's cerebral and terrifying. There's the notion of Brundle's sexual awakening, as he goes from a recluse to meeting Gina Davis's Veronica, and we watch as their love affair basically takes Brundle through puberty. He starts eating junk food, growing strange hairs on his back, producing pimples on his face, and developing new feelings of self-confidence. Though the film asserts that it's man's jealousy, animalistic ambition, and need to prove his self-worth that will ultimately lead to his own demise. My teeth have begun to fall out. The medicine cabinet's now the Brundle Museum of Natural History. You want to see what else is in it? No. While The Fly is certainly a sci-fi classic, it's also a surreal gothic horror film. But it's the B-story romance between Goldblum and Davis that truly makes this film stand out. As Cronenberg has often stated, it's a romance that ends in tragedy. As all romances must. Seth, please! Wait! Seth! Don't come back! Following the duo's awkwardly budding relationship as it develops into a deep and understanding love for each other truly grounds a fanciful story that would otherwise be much more difficult to digest. What happened? I know an old lady who swallowed a fly, perhaps she'll die. Goldblum's performance is outstanding. After seeing this movie, you'll have a hard time seeing him in any other way. He actually becomes the fly. And even before he starts to fully transform, Goldblum begins to develop small yet detectable mannerism changes like bugging out his eyes even further, moving his tongue in a weird way when he speaks, and for me, the creepiest thing is the constant twitching. So subtle, yet so eerie. He's like... It's like a weird bug. Production designer Carol Spire sets the stage for a postmodern tale that takes place mostly in Brundle's otherworldly laboratory. And makeup artist Chris Wallace and Stephen Dupuy won an Academy Award for Best Makeup. It couldn't have been more well-deserved. Goldblum's physical transformation goes from awesome to incredibly grotesque and then almost nauseating. Nothing I say will prepare you for how much your stomach will churn while watching this movie, but I can tell you that the image of the fly will haunt you for years to come. We'll be the ultimate family. A family of three joined together in one body. More human than I am alone. The movie is excessively graphic, from insanely gross mutations that progress throughout the film, maggot birth nightmares, inside out baboons, inset vomit that melts human flesh, I'm telling you, it's nuts. <laughs> But I've read that the pre-release cut of the film was even worse. There were apparently scenes involving a half-cat, half-baboon mutation, which Brundle has to beat to death with an iron bar, and then another one where Brundle has to bite off an extra leg that grows out of his stomach. There's an underlying comedic tone to the absolutely disgusting nature of the special effects, which, if you know my taste, is usually right up my alley. But the fly can get intense for even a creep like me. <laughs> main tagline, which is aptly, be afraid, be very afraid, has been referenced on countless occasions, including... Be afraid. 
be very afraid. Anyway, what do you guys think? Have you seen the fly? Does the over the top grotesque nature of the fly freak you out? Or does it give you the tingles? You know, in a good way. You know who you are. And what's your favorite Cronenberg film? It's also interesting to note that 1986 saw a lot of heavy special effects makeup horror sci-fi type movies like Alien, Critters, From Beyond. What are some of your favorites from the genre? Let me know in the comments below. I know what the disease wants. What does the disease want? It wants to turn me into something else. That's not too terrible, is it? Most people would give anything to be turned into something else. Turned into what? What do you think, a fly? Subscribe to Cinefix for more What to Watch Before You Die in conjunction with Sundance TV every Thursday. Follow me on Insta at MacWall and hashtag WhatToWatchBud to suggest more movies. I might not look like the fly, but I am a fly. I've got the wings and the hair or the mask thing. <laughs>